Scientists Donuts and Discussions. Um, on behalf of the e-board, um, we really appreciate you all coming out to the, today's discussion and um, taking the time out as well as our panelists taking time out of their schedule as well. Um, to kind of reintroduce you all to who Scientista is, we are um, a local chapter here at UB, and we're here to promote diversity as well as raise women's representation and STEM fields with a focus in computer science at the moment. So um, to kind of get into today's event, um, the topic is diversity, and we want to um, we want to bring in professors to kind of talk about you know their input on diversity and kind of get their um, opinion on it as well as give audiences feedback on it too. So to introduce our panelists for today, we have Professor Chris Schindler. Hi. Um, many of you know me. <laughs> So I get many of you in the computer organization side, computer microprocessors, embedded systems, etc. Um, great. All right, and now we have Professor Jeffrey Challen. No applause. Stand up. Two four twenty one. Just a graduate level. So some of you guys may have to get some points. Yeah. And last but not least, we have Professor Vina Rama, Rama Murphy. So I, I am, I've been in the computer science for a long, long time, well before these guys came in, about 30 years, and um, nearly 30 years, I should say, now exactly. And I teach, um, at this point, I teach a lot of low-level courses, and the sophomore junior level courses, and uh, one of the courses I teach is heavily uh, diversified, it's not in computer science, okay, it is for general education, but I can tell you more about it as the discussion goes along. Great. Well, thank you all for coming out today. We really appreciate you taking out the time. And um, kind of to delve into today's discussion um, on diversity, we want to start off with how do you all define diversity and what is your evaluation of the quality in the CS department? And whoever wants to start off first, please. Yeah. Uh, I, I'm going to draw an example from where I come from. When I started my engineering, I did my bachelor's in engineering. I had about, uh, I think, person, percentage wise, 3% were females. I mean, I'm thinking about male female as the diversity. It doesn't have, doesn't have to be. And now I, I look back at uh, some of the institutions in India. I come from India. Um, clearly, it's more than uh, well represented by female. Maybe 50, 60 females or 40 males or something like that, 50 50. Um, so, I think um, um, in our department, when you come to our department, and I look at my class, you know, when they say, oh, there are scholarships available for females, I hardly I have about, uh, you know, uh, 5 to 10 percent females in my class, in the class I teach, okay, in the computer science department. On the other hand, I teach a class at the 100 level. This class is for um, general education. There are 46 different majors. Okay, you can see the diversity. And there are equally represented 50-50. And we te I teach um, really hardcore programming in JavaScript and uh, all kinds of uh, the stack that is so popular in emerging technology. And the, the people who do very well, believe it or not, are the, the females. Okay, So uh, I mean, I'm just specifically looking at the females there. And they are doing very well. They are all from all kinds of majors. And I, so I feel that, you know, um, Diversity doesn't mean that it doesn't, it doesn't have to be male, female, it doesn't have to be majors. If you do it the right way, you can always teach the right things to anybody, I feel. You know, so um, that's my opinion. And, uh, but our department doesn't have the diversity that we're talking about. In the any entire field fact. doesn't have the diversity. Yeah, I mean, it, it, to me, I, I think, you know, diversity seems like a, a, a label that's thrown around that identifies some specific quality of, of the, the population, but I would just like computer scientists to look like everybody else, right? I mean, I would like us to be a subset of the general population, right? So, you know, look like the rest of UB, right? Look like the rest of the United States, and you can you can look at us in a variety of different ways. You can look at us in terms of gender. You know, I think that's a reasonable starting point because that's a, I mean, obviously that's something that's very out of whack. Right, but that's also maybe one of the more basic, you know, uh, components of human diversity. Right, it's about 50-50 globally. Right, so we could get there. I think. Um, but then when you look, you know, 
know, racially, you look at socioeconomic classes, you know, I would like us to look like a random subset of EV students, right? And I would like us to look, you know, broad, more broadly as a university, I think I'd also like us to look like a general, you know, sampling of the population. Uh, so that's, you know, so it's almost like, I don't see it as diversity, I just see it as that's what everyone else looks like, right? I mean, I just want us to be normal, right? I don't want us to be so skewed. I mean, right now, we're, we're, we're very diverse, right? You know, weirdly white group. <laughs> Look at this panel, right? I mean, I, you know, I, I, I hesitated when I was asked to, to join this panel because I was like, it's two white guys, right, talking about, <laughs> talking about diversity. <laughs> Chris and I laughed about this a few minutes ago, and I said, well, this is just, we're, we're, so we're here as a symbol of the problem, right? <laughs> Actually, the problem is worse than this panel because to have one third. I know we're doing good. Right. <laughs> we, we just doubled the gender ratio in the department. You know, what would this one look like? Right. So yeah, I mean, I, I think we can do a lot better. I think we need to do a lot better as well because I think from a product standpoint and what we do in the field, um, the people who design um, technology, um, programs, embedded systems, etc., um, who's the ultimate user? The client, the customer, the people who are going to buy this, and you buy us things based on your experience. So when you design an interface, for example, that interface is based on how you would prefer it to look, what you're used to. And by having a more diverse field, a more diverse group of people, um, the products themselves um, are better in tune with the people that are going to use them. Okay. So it sounds like um, diversity in terms of how we should be tackling it is just, it should just represent, mm -hmm. you know, what we see on a daily basis. I just don't see a compelling, I mean, and I think like the way I, I think about it too, I just don't see, I've never heard a compelling argument why we shouldn't look representative of the broader population, right? I mean, you, you get some people that make these weird arguments about um, animal quantitative or something like that, and maybe there's, there's some sense that that's true, but if you think about the actual job of a software engineer, the people who work in technology, right? I mean, you do, you're not locked in a room 20 hours a day writing computer code with no contact with other people, right? So a lot of that job comes down to other types of abilities, right, where there's a lot more parity between, between, the, between the sexes, even if you believe that's what we're right, in terms of interacting with people and working in teams and being able to communicate and stuff like that. So I just think that, like I said, I, I've never heard a compelling reason why we shouldn't have a group of computer scientists that looks like everybody else. Mm -hmm. oh, sounds good. So kind of moving on to our next question, uh, what does the department miss out on due to a lack of diversity, or maybe more so in the way our conversation is going, it's not looking like how, what we see on a daily basis. What, you know, the, when we go out to the world, there's you know, a mix of cultures. So what is the department missing out on due to this lack? I, I, I do interact with a, a lot of people from other departments, I'm sure both of these two. I feel that the, the lot of, there's a lot of creativity I find a gold mine of ideas when I go talk to somebody in dance and theater, you know. So, so I think likewise, you know, if that somebody comes from a different background, different um, outlook, different opinion, you know, so you can you can get ideas that are different than you know the from, from the, that of a homogeneous group, you know, like whole a bunch of men working together. And I'm just going back to the usual stereotype, typical diversity. You know, you add a couple of <laughs> females there, you know, you may get some, you know, totally different ideas. You know, so that that's what I think we are missing out. So different outlook, different, uh, you know, just even in simple things like interface design. You know, I would like it this way. I would like it that way. You know, so uh, you know, it, it, it is not a single-minded. You know, uh, you know, one person, one one denomination uh, kind of uh, outlook. If you have uh, inputs from different people, different types of users, and a representative population. I mean, yeah, well, I was going to give you a first I mean, I, I, I think, I, I don't love the, the, the phrasing of this question, because I'm not sure that, you know, I think there's plenty of stuff that we miss out on, but I just think, as, as a department, as a faculty, we have a responsibility, sort of an institutional and a social responsibility, to try to create as representative a body of computer scientists as we can, right? That's kind of our job, right? I mean, I don't think we should be sitting back and be satisfied because we have a lot of computer scientists and 85% of them are white dudes, right? 
that's just not that's not right. That's a symbol that that's a sign that we're doing something wrong, right? Um, and so I feel like you know, not it's not this feature that we're trying to implement, right? It's a bug that we're trying to get rid of. Right? Like we have this problem. Like we're we're not doing a good job of exciting people about computer science. I think that has broader implications outside the university. But I think primarily that lack of diversity inside the university. You know, it's not like we want diversity because it's this fun new thing. If we want to fix the problems that are preventing us from uh, attracting a diverse group of people into the field. Okay. And um, so I guess based on that, what are some things the department and staff can do to address diversity? And uh, what can we as students ourselves do, maybe within the, the university or maybe even outside in our community? I'll go in on that one right away. Um, we do a lot of K through 12 outreach. and. Um, you know, I, I truly believe that the the problem starts long before people get here. Um, I think it's it's a social issue. I think it's the way that children are brought up. Um, people fields are, are stereotyped, and I think that doesn't help matters. I think by the time a lot of these people get into high school, um, they think that this is a you know, a field that is defined by this population. And people, for will go back to, well, the, I guess we're stereotyping this example. Yes. But women and men, gender, um, you know, it's a male-dominated field, and that's what it ought to be. That's not what it ought to be, but I think that's what these folks think as they come up. That's what they're made to believe. So to fix the problem, we need to go well beyond UB, and, and some of it's outreach, um, dealing with younger people to break these stereotypes. So, I, so I, I will come after that because I'm the contrast to that argument, right? I think, um, I think that we have problems at multiple parts of the pipeline. That is well documented, right? We have problems at K-12, through we have problems after people leave college. But I'm a college educator, right? And I have the most influence here at UB, right? And so my concern is, are we moving the needle, right? I mean, we get students that come in with all sorts of preconceived ideas about what computer science is. Right? And we get students that come in, and it's possible, and I think what, part of I think what happens is we get a core of students who are interested in computer science that come in on day one, right? That core is very unrepresentative, and it's due to the problems that Chris has identified, right? But our job is to, you know, wrap, and I don't want to lose those people, right? We don't, the, the way to increase diversity is not to drive people away from the field, right? So I don't want to lose you know, the gamers and, you know, the, the white guys who grew up in a computer and stuff like that. I don't want to lose those people, but it's our responsibility to, to push as much other, you know, to increase the reach of computer science so that we do a job of moving uh, us towards a more diverse environment, right? That's our responsibility. So we can't always keep pointing fingers at K-12, right? You know, that's a part of the problem, but we're a part of the problem, right? And there's lots of evidence, there's plenty of schools that have done you know, things internally, and have been able to produce much more representative student bodies, right? So there's plenty of evidence that we can take those same students, and, I, and I'm not denying that there are plenty of stereotypes about computer science and who should be a computer scientist and people have different levels of exposure to computers for their kids and blah, 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 but you come to college and it's sort of like a moment where students, I think, are open to a lot of new ideas, you're being introduced to new fields, there's new courses to take, there's a lot of, you know, so for example, people will say, well, we need to have computer science taught in high school because that's the only way people are going to learn about it. There's all sorts of stuff that's taught in college that's never going to be taught in high school, right? And those fields still attract people, right? And we don't think the anthropology department is saying, we need to teach anthropology in high school so that people will get excited about when they come to college. It's never going to happen, right? I mean, these are fields that people are exposed to when they get to college and they still manage to, they still manage to become interested. Right. So, so again, I mean, I think that the now you guys, if you guys want to get involved through K through twelve outreach, absolutely, right? That's a great thing to do. But I think the faculty of the department, right? We have to be really satisfied that we've done as much as we can internally to do things on campus and to improve our department before I think we start expending a large amount of efforts in trying to fix other parts of it. So that's that's my position. Yeah, I, I, one of the things is that we think that you have to be computing only if you're a computer scientist. I've known, I work with people who are not even computer science majors, who are doing very well in the computing process that we're talking about. You know, so that is, so it doesn't, it doesn't have to be, you cannot count just the people who are majors. You know, there are people who are outside who are still doing computing. I think 
most of the people outside also are doing computing. They don't have a degree in computing, that's all. You know, so um, that's something. And also, my feeling on the, on the another note, the pool that is provided to us to select from, you know, the university admissions pool, I think that is that itself is, you know, the, the raw material with, from which we start attracting people to computer science. That itself is, is not representative, I think, of the, uh, the diverse pools that we have outside. I think this is not true of many uh, uh, Ivy League schools I, I hear. You know, I, I think maybe you, I know that when they admit, they admit, at least the male-female ratio, they admit, make sure there are 50-50. I don't want to name schools. You know, they admit, at least in that diversity, I think you can guess which school it is. You know. So and then from there, you know, um, you have a pool which is right there, you know, diverse, and then you go on. And also, you understand that I have a colleague who is, um, you know, completely all-female school. You know, it, it's, uh, you know, he says, oh, we have 100% uh, increase in female enrollment, he says, you know, Deepak Kumar. Yeah. So, you know, their diversity means something else. You know? so, I, I, so I think the counting of who, um, how many females are doing, how many underrepresented minorities are doing computing, it's kind of somewhat um, not not correct. I feel it's you. It doesn't have to be majors, and I you know it, you don't have to be a major to be doing computing. You can be outside and do a minor, do a few courses here, and things like that. But you know, you simply want people to do um, computing. You know, I mean, to be uh, and also you don't want to force the issue. It has to be. I feel it has to be organic. You know, you simply say, all right, we want more more computer scientists. Everybody come and do computers like that so, uh, and you have um, another thing I feel is that you have to go to place where there is diverse population rather than you know bringing them into your uh, in, they, they may want to do dance you know but you can go there and say you can do computing and you know, so, uh, so if, if uh, diversity in computing is what we are talking about I, I feel that's that's my opinion what is the, I mean what is the gender ratio you think I'm no I don't think so no, the like incoming, incoming, uh, incoming uh, female male. It, it is roughly 50. Uh, females are like 50 times <coughs> less than males, but like the chances of the whole is almost 50 50. But oh, is that so? Really, can play horrible with computer science or make error or engineering in general. Okay. I mean, we're 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 not we're not representative. Of UB, right? Oh, you okay. may not be representative of the outside world, but we're not anywhere close to being representative. I, I think I think the, the the funny thing about the Ivy League schools we're talking about is I think a lot of these elite institutions are actually having to uh, depress the number of women, right? Because I think if they admitted them with equal criteria, it'd be a higher percentage of women. Women. women are better at stuff, right? Guys, you just gotta like you guys gotta accept this, right? You guys all know this, right? But you know that's that's the other thing we're losing out with not having women in computer science, right? Is that if you look actually in college across a lot of different disciplines, women outperform men almost universally. Right? So we're missing out on those. You guys may appreciate that because your grades are a little bit better or something. Um, the, I mean, the other thing, the other thing I wanted to, to add to this is that um, you know I so so I, I'm, I'm not in any way going to try to say that I'm some sort of anti-stereotype, but I so you know I grew up, I had a, a Nintendo when I was a kid. You know, I played some computer games, uh, programmed some Basic back in the day. Um, my uncle got me a book on C programming when I was in high school, right? But I got to college, I never opened that book, right? I got to college, I was gonna be a physics major, right? And I spent a whole year as a physics major, and really what drew me in, and maybe this is why this is something I'm, I'm sort of passionate about, is what drew me in was I took a course in intro computer science, right? So I was, you know, again, I looked like the stereotype white guy who showed up on campus and was like, computers, I'm gonna do computers. But, you know, I really, and I actually don't have an undergraduate degree in computer science, but I have an undergraduate degree in physics. So, you know, I was really sort of drawn in by a department that taught intro courses very well, that made the field very compelling. Now, look, I mean, was, it, was I sort of culturally predetermined to maybe be a little bit more interested in that sort of thing? Sure, right? But, you know, I did not show up on campus day one and, and want to program computers. And I missed a lot of earlier opportunities to learn how to program computers as well. So, I don't know what was wrong with me. And to kind of piggyback what you were saying before internally, kind of, I guess, about to see how they should be involved internally and being able to um, I kind of bring, you know, more diversity or get, get a better representation of the population. What is it that you guys are doing internally or, you know, hope to possibly do in the future that actually combat that? 
Or is that something that you even think about on a daily basis? Is that of a concern? Maybe something more of the back burner? Uh, I, I think I think Mina and I both, yeah. both can speak on this, but we do teach some intro courses where we have non-majors, non-CS majors, and they're not computer engineering majors in there. And one of the things I try to do in those courses is to um, try to expose that population to the field because we have undecideds in there as well. And to have them realize what the field's about, that it can be exciting. Show them some of the more fascinating facts of the field in the hopes that we can take some people who would be really talented in this field and get them to think, wow, I am undecided. And I think that's the route that I want to go. And I've had a, a, a substantial, a not negligible number of students come up and talk to me and actually end up in our department. And um, being a UT yeah, student that's 11, and yeah. that's where that happens sometimes. That happens. And also, it's strangely, uh, even though it's not a required course for engineering, people laugh. Engineers uh, take my course, and that's all. And also, I, I have spoken to a lot of people that who are right, right now Carl students, you know, computer science majors, who, who took non-majors course. They were not going to do computing, and they've gone, to, gone on to do um, computer science. Uh, once again, I just want to emphasize, it doesn't have to be, you know, you can tell. I know that most of you guys are all computer science majors. It doesn't have to, you have, you know, for, for you to be compute, uh, counted as computing, you don't have to be a computer science major. You know, you can, you can be doing any, any computing, any kind of hardcore computing without, you know, um, without um, having a degree in computing. I don't know whether they agree, these guys agree or not. Like, you know, I, I feel that because I, I and I, I learned it all by myself. I don't think when I, when I did engineering, there was any programming available, you know, so. The same way, when I, I keep myself up to date by, you know, learning by myself. And likewise, I've seen students, I've gone, I've, I've entered students who are not computer science majors, who are going to be doing computer science um, PhD, believe it or not. Okay, they've not taken a single course probably in computer science department. They are different majors, some other majors, and they are going on to do it. So, it's simply that, that. It's simply that, you have, uh, um, the realization is that we need to have, a representation in computing from all the fields. That, that's I think that's the theme of the, the, the talk. So you can have them over, like you know, maybe have them over in your uh, club. Tell them about computing. Maybe they take a couple of courses. You know, get interested. Maybe for masters they can do computing, something like that. I mean, I, I I totally agree with you about expanding the base of computing, but I think we still need to look at our majors and say. It's not acceptable for majors to look like this. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Right? yeah. I mean, we do a good job of, of reaching out, and I, I completely agree. I mean, programming should be a service course the way the calculus is, right? I mean, I think 10 years from now, I was really disappointed to see in the Gen Ed thing that we didn't get really solid programming courses in there as an option. Because, I mean, you guys know how powerful these tools are, right? I mean, these are the best tools for solving problems, right? Period, right? You guys know the sort of superpowers that you acquire when you start to be able to learn how to write code, right? I mean, you can do things that uh, your friends in a bunch of other areas would find super useful, right? And you can do them like millions of times faster, right? Um, and that, to me, is, is the thing that we need to get out there and get into the community and get everybody to use, right? And I think that's one of the things we lose out when we lose diversity, is we lose, you know, Chris touched on this a little bit before, but I, you know, I see computing as the most powerful tools for solving problems that we may have ever created, right, pure, right, in the history of the world, right? It's arguable with the pretty presses up there, but whatever. Right? So, I want people to have this tool so they can solve problems, right? And I want everybody to have this tool because we have a lot of interesting problems to solve. And if the people that have this tool are white men who live in San Francisco, then we're going to have a lot of car sharing services, right? And very few apps that like address hunger and poverty and inequality and other big you know, societal problems. So, I mean, that's sort of a stereotype about San Francisco, but it's sort of true, right? It's a little sad, right? It's like white San Franciscan problems get solved by apps, right? All the rest of us are you know, sitting around, you know, um, still trying to figure out how to use you know, uh, words. Right? Um, so I think you know, as far as I'm concerned, I mean, stuff that we can do in the park, right? So, for example, somebody pointed this out at one of the earlier scientist events. We, I think until maybe recently, maybe this has been fixed, maybe it hasn't, but we didn't even have a three-year flow sheet up there showing somebody how they could get a degree in computer science in three years, right? So it's like, if you don't step on the 115 bus on day one as a freshman, too bad, 
right? Like, this is a computer science degree. You shouldn't have to immediately know on day one when you arrive in Kansas what you want to do, right? I mean, we need to have plans for people who figure this out a little bit later and want to get involved in computer science. So that, to me, seems just like a, like a total oversight, right? Um, we have, as part of the Gen Ed thing, we're going to start offering some freshman seminars in the first year, which I think will be very cool. Um, if you guys want to do something simple, find the faculty member of the department you know best and tell them, I heard about these freshman seminars, it would be awesome if you would teach one. Um, these are going to be 25 student classes, they're going to be hopefully top, I'm, I'm hoping this is the way it will look, right, there's a discussion in the department over how we're going to handle this, but I think it would be awesome if you came in in the first year you had contact with a faculty member and you could work on a particular set of problems in a small context and, you know, get started in the department in a way that's a little less anonymous than some of the huge courses that we teach. Um, but I also think we need to look at some of our intro courses and figure out, you know, how can we better attract students? How can we, and part of the success or failure of those courses has to be what the department looks like, right? Um, because that's our moment, right? That's the moment when we can find students, smart students, anybody on campus, and show them what computers are like and get them hooked, right? Because, like I said, I mean, I just think this is the coolest stuff on earth. I think a lot of you guys agree. And I think once people start to find out, right, I mean, this, this stuff is incredibly powerful. So, you know, there, there are these incredible success stories. Right at Harvard, they teach intro computing, like a real concentrator level introduction to computing in one semester to 800 students. Right, Harvard is about a quarter of the size of you. Right, so a quarter of their student body now takes this class. Right, by 25 percent of students, this is not a tech school. Right, um, and most of them are computer science majors. Right, this is sort of speaks to what Vino was talking about and brought in, brought in the base of, of people that participate. But they learn how to build a website, right? They learn how to build you know, C programs. They do a bunch of cool things. And they walk away from the class with a real useful skill that they, they can apply to bio or arts or whatever they want to do, right? I think that, you know, I think if we could get there, um, I don't necessarily want our department to get four times larger, although that would be awesome. Right? I think we have to be willing, we also have to be willing to grow as a department, right? I mean, if we're scared of growth, what we're going to end up with are just the diehard people who knew they wanted to do computer science when they showed up, right? And I think that's another problem that we're having with this department is for a variety of reasons that I won't bore you with. Um, we're, we're scared to grow, right? You know, we, I think we were, are sort of terrified of what would happen if we really succeeded in convincing people that computer science was the school and we ended up with three times as many people in the department, right? Because we don't feel comfortable that the resources would be there to actually deliver the quality of education. So kind of, it seems like we're alluding to the idea that we want to make people who, who, who are not familiar with computer science, <clears throat> how useful it can be, whether they want to go into the field of computer science or other fields, and how, how it can actually be fun. Because a lot of times people feel like it's such a serious, you know, kind of major, something that's scary. So it seems like kind of alluding to how fun it is and how useful and powerful it can be would be something that might get, you know, more interest and get a better representation in our and I also like the idea of the growth, that's something that's also very important. And um, I guess kind of moving on to our last question for today before we open up the open forum to all you guys, um, is what levels of diversity have you experienced throughout your time as a student and professionals? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I spent time in industry and you know I work mainly with uh, we have mechanical engineers and electrical engineers. My background's in electrical, like these. And uh, the ratio that we saw was, you know, very similar to what I see here. So I don't in the industry. I, I work in a research group. I can tell you that, I mean, I, in my experience, I worked with a, a lot of research groups, nothing to do with computer science, outside computer science, uh, males and females. And uh, the one that sustained for the past five years, we worked so beautifully, is all female groups. You know, maybe all men will work like that, you know, but, you know, so uh, it's, it, it's, it, I think it's, it's simply that we, we kind of uh, pitch in for each other and the way we plan things like going to conferences, how we make up for each other, oh, it's un unbelievable, you know. So usually when a, when a research group is formed and we, people work, by the end of it, we are done. That's how it works out, I think, many of the times. But this has been going on for the past five years. It's not that we meet every day, but it's simply that it's all-female group and uh, we kind of... Uh, 
uh, you know, uh, understand each other very well, and uh, uh, the very nice products have come out of it, and uh, you know, it, it is a, it's, a, it's a success story, I feel. You know. And I also have another collaboration with another female. I can tell you that uh, she had a difficulty with working with a male counterpart of our department. And so she came to me, and we've been we've had a couple of grants, and we've been working on very well. So I think there's a there's a I mean the contribution of having a female in your, in your group is uh, is always um, I think uh, impactful I would say for a research, and uh, uh, and that is what uh, uh, many groups are missing out. You know, so that, that's my opinion. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I second these comments. I and I remember when I was you know, at Harvard as a PhD student, um, I, I took a job sort of sort of as a as an RA. That's probably the, the best closest analog. So I was going to be in a position where I was working closely with college students, and it was a job that my wife and I both did together. And we both loved, but I remember feeling like this was the first time that I had really um, had profession a professional relationship with like a significant number of women, right? Because there were a lot of other women who worked as part of the staff for this particular house, and. It was really helpful for me, right? And it really made me feel a lot weirder when I went back to my department, right? Because it was like, okay, you know, walk the halls here for days on end, and I don't, I don't see very many women or any women sometimes. Um, and, and I don't know. I mean, I, I think sometimes too, and this is a challenge for the men in the audience. I, I think that we, our field is actually sort of in this little bit of a death spiral, right? Where there's so few women, right? And it's so male dominated that we, we we're producing a culture that's actually causing women to. Right. So even when we, you know, have a woman who joins the field and thinks it's really cool, you know, there's all these sad stories about them graduating, they go out to the workplace, they get offended one too many times. It really once is too many, right? Um, and then they quit. And so that, you know, and, and, and it's us, right? It's us and the way that we act and how we're treating people. And I know myself that I, I'm sure I do lots of things like this, right? And I wish I had someone around to sort of point out. And I've tried to learn a little bit about some of the things that men do that cause women to be uncomfortable and shut down within the discussions and the gender language that we use and stuff like that, right? Um, but it's hard, right? It's hard when you're around guys most of the time because, you know, there's certain things that you start to just think are kind of normal, right? They're kind of okay. And those are things that are really, uh, in many cases, very, very difficult for women to put up with. And they shouldn't have to, right? That's the thing, right? They're just, they're, they're, they're wrong. So. All right, so I think it's a good time so we can open to you guys. I'm just to let you know we'll be ending exactly at 4.50 for anyone who has classes at 5. So please feel welcome you know, to walk out if you need to. Um, so if anyone wanted to kind of start off, if they had a question. Yeah. Uh, I'm sure you're um, first off, thanks for being on this panel and taking the time out of your day to do this. Uh, I think the last thing that was said really is um, the biggest takeaway. And so I've gone to like other talks surrounding like uh, diversity problems and things and it they're they're just talks, right? Like we can talk about this problem and get together and have these like powwows, but what can we do as a short term action to actually have an impact on this problem? Because um, like something that I've started doing recently is I've started defaulting to she um, when I talk about something or someone that I don't know gender. So like if I'm talking about an engineer, uh, instead of saying like, oh, and he does this thing, I'll say she does this thing. Um, which I think has like a small impact, but it also shows a lot of care um, and, and carefulness in your, in your uh, diction. So what are other sort of things that we can do as a student, uh, students in the computer, students, computer science department we can kind of help this problem? I, I would say publicize Know, good things about computer science and ask them to come into computer, computing, I would say, you know, so um, you know, tell them about the success stories that, you know, the male counterparts have had, and it, it, it is not uh, that difficult to survive. You can tell them all the good things about the department, and, you know, and, and computing uh, for them to get it. And for the females, I would say, maybe you can spread, I mean, I'm a female, I, I would say just ignore, if, if somebody talks very you know harsh to you. It's their problem. It's not your problem. So just ignore and carry on. I would say that that that's something you should have a thick skin to survive in computer science. I can tell you from my uh, personal opinion. So just ignore. Just do your best. I think you can do very well. So I I would say.
just encourage them to come in. Now, what I do in my class, I don't want to give away the secret. I think I have my students here. I just make sure I know every one of my female students uh, personally. I talk, I know them like for years to come, where they sit sad, where they, and I call them, call upon them in my class. I think, uh, I know, I know, um, she's Maggie, right? Um, no. She's never had a class. She's never had a class uh, course in my. Uh, she's never taken a course in my in my lifetime. But I think I I know her from talking in Chanchista, and, uh, and uh, we've had very heated organization uh, arguments with the Gala Gala and myself Friday afternoons. Yeah. You know. So you know, I told her I promised her a job because we had a discussion. At the end of it, I didn't say I'm going to take off a point. But I told her I'll get you somewhere, you know. So you know, we uh, we have really nice discussions. Uh, you know, specifically I, I I reach out to the female students and also not just male female. I think I I don't want to uh, this even though this kin you know this, you see all these posted about the, the graduate students of color and things like that. So I also make sure every diverse every person who contributes to the diversity of the class is given personal attention. I do that. I mean, I don't tell it out ever, but I think I'm just telling it to you. I just make sure I know there. I know Dalton, right? Yeah, Dalton, right? So, um, and I, I do that. It's not just, just the skin. It's not just male, female. It's also other kinds of things which is not noted in the diversity. You know, the person who's an introvert, you know, who's an extrovert. So I, in all those things, you know, you just, as a teacher, you have to pay attention to that, you know, in, um, in, not not ex, you know paying a lot of attention. It should come organically. Like you know, you look at somebody, you know how they talk, how they solve problems, how they answer questions, and then you pick them and uh, make sure they are mentored. So that's something that I do, uh, in, a, in my own way to contribute to the diversity. You know, and I'm I'm doing that with all. I mean, I I just go all out in my non majors course to talk to the people who are you know contributing to the diversity. Yeah, I mean, I, I think so. So let me give, let me try to give advice to the white guys. Right? <laughs> so, I mean, I, and, and I'm not perfect to call this advice myself, right? But I'll say that the first, I think, for for the white guys that are here, right? So, you probably are, are have a tendency to think, right, that this is good that you're here, and it is good that you're here, right? And that maybe, you know, that means that you're somehow not part of the problem, right? And I would say you're doing better than most by being here, right? And you're doing better than most by acknowledging this is a problem. And I think those things are really important, right? So, you know, even if all we do for the next two couple of years with this group is just continue to, you know, identify that there's a problem, I think that accomplishes something because it allows people from the outside, it allows the women and the other, you know, minorities among us to at least recognize that we know that we're bad at this, right? Like, this isn't the way we want things to be, right? This is a feature, it's a bug, we want it to go away, we'll keep talking about it. Now, at some point, we need to actually, like, do some stuff, right, and actually show some progress. But I think at least beginning is just going to take a little while. So at least just identifying that there's a problem and understanding that and being willing to acknowledge it um, is a step. But I would also point out, and I've learned this from reading accounts online from women in the field and minorities in the field, there are a lot of things that you probably do that you're not entirely aware of that end up turning people off, right, and end up making it difficult for them to work with you. So go out and read some of those, right? And, and you know, I would say, if you're trying to do the right thing, it's even more frustrating when you're doing these things inadvertently, right? And so it's hard to be like, oh, I do it all the time, but I, that's not what I meant, you know? Like, I didn't mean to come off as aggressive and bossy, I'm just really excited about the project, right? Um, but I think reading some of those accounts from the other side will give you a little bit more context and will allow you to avoid doing things that have consequences that you don't want, right? Like if you want women to be comfortable working with you, if you want to be able to sort of inspire uh, groups of people that look differently than you and think differently than you, then there's tools and approaches out there and there's some perspectives you can get to a lot of yourself. Uh, the third thing I would say, though, and I think this is really important because there's a small number of people in this room and a large number of people aren't here, is we have to stop ex stop accepting this sort of behavior, right? When we when we see other people doing it, right? Just just stop, right? Say something, you know, uh, point out when you feel like people are doing things that you're not comfortable with. Um, we can't expect, 
you know, the, the one woman on every engineering team to be constantly fighting these battles. It's not fair, right? And when you look at why women leave the field, sometimes it's because of this. They feel like they're constantly having to sort of push their way into projects, you know, point out the things that they did, you know, you know really sort of work really hard to establish themselves in ways that men don't. And part of your role can be to just make sure that that doesn't have to happen. So, you know, stick up for those people and help them feel included. But also, when you see people that are behaving in ways that are negative or have stereotypes about the field, say something, right? Because that's the only way that those, and you don't have to be a joke about it, right? Unless you want to be. <laughs> Unless that person did something particularly egregious in which, by all means, you know, you know, go off on them because I think that's the right response. But I think some of this is, is also just rooted in ignorance, right? And other people have not thought about these issues very carefully. Um, I, I, I hope that the reason we have this problem isn't because, you know, 60% of the white men in this field are actively trying to get everybody else out, right? I, I don't believe that. It, who knows? Maybe that's true. Uh, that would be very sad. But I don't think it's the case. I just think in a lot of cases it's a small minority, right, that behave badly, and a lot of us that don't understand how our actions are perceived, right? And so if we can work on ourselves and, and not doing things unintentionally and also work to silence that small group and get them out, right? Like that's that's a portion of the field that I would be happy to see go away. Right? Um, then then we're gonna you know, I think we'll, over time we'll be doing a better job of creating an environment and an atmosphere that makes people feel comfortable working with us. Yeah, and the other thing I want to point out is I think we've focused a lot today on the fact that you know, diversity, we're talking about gender. We have to remember it's not just gender. Diversity goes far beyond that, and I think we focused on that almost a little too much today. But um, I think we need to remember that as well. And everything that we talked about in terms of gender is applicable to making them feel diverse in general. Okay. Class, race, right? so, yeah, 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 that, that's yeah. Yeah. I think it was the easiest example to pick on the show, but. Yeah, it's representative. It's the most obvious. Yeah, yeah. Right? yeah, yeah. 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 It's it, like, it, it, it's it sort of, right. I sort of feel like it's step one. Right? Let's do that first. Yeah, so our discussion right, wasn't diverse, huh? Our discussion wasn't diverse. Yeah, well, the panel's not diverse, so you can't blame them. <laughs> <laughs> Although there is one guy with dress shoes on and one guy without dress shoes on, so there's an aspect of diversity of your I'd like to know what do you actors think about the current course material and the flow sheet that we have for computer science? Like what, how do you think this current flow sheet encourages students to be interested in computer science. For one thing, I mean, one thing that is a really big turn off for me was that I'm a junior and I'm still learning to complement on like a semester basis. And, like there are a lot of repetition, and I like, how do you think we can change that and make it so like it encourages more people to be interested in computer science? So I, I'll, I'll jump in first because I have strong feelings about this. <laughs> um, I think our computer science curriculum stinks. It's terrible. Uh, it's and this is one thing that you guys could actually actively help change, right? Tell somebody this, right? Tell Idong, tell, you know, a tree. Uh, yeah, so tell... see, <laughs> um, if I might contribute. Um, uh, those of you who don't, my name is Akshay Rukh, I'm a faculty, and I'm uh, supposed to take over to this job. There's no there. supposed to there. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's going to. I am going to. <laughs> All right. Uh, in the summer, in July. Um, so one of the things that I've already started doing, and I've talked to not many, but at least some of you, is how, what do we need to do to change? Uh, uh, we are starting off with, I mean, we, it's not going to be a one day process, not probably not one semester, probably not one year to take us some time, but we're going to, um, definitely by fall, we're going to start looking at all we're going to look at the first year courses, next semester, the second year courses, and so forth. So that in two years, starting from this fall, we have basically began the whole thing. Um, I am currently already soliciting comments on 115, 116. If you guys have any comments, please do let me know. Uh, ATRI at Buffalo, um, I'm more than happy to come and talk. Um, if you want to meet face to face, that's perfectly fine. Uh, just send me email. I'm kind of flaky about coming to school. But, uh, uh, I'll be more than happy. Uh, I'm, I'm, in fact, if you have something to say, I highly encourage you that you contact me immediately because I'm working on a document that I'm going to distribute 
that I'm going to work over this weekend. This weekend. And, and I'm going to take that one step further, too. Um, I, I know that your comments were with regard to the program, and, and immediate fixes are always nice. But um, especially after you graduate, and you're out, you know, maybe doing graduate work, you're, you're in the field, you might look back and say, wow, you know, they could have done a lot better had they done this, this, and this. We're here. Yeah. Contact us. Um, it doesn't stop when you get your diploma, because industry alone will enlighten you to a lot of things, and, and that feedback is always welcome and encouraged and very helpful. But, but overall, going back to your point, I mean, I, I, to, I, I think I, I like a trace approach. Uh, the, the thing that I hate the most about curriculum is there's way too many requirements, and it's way too much. Of it. You know, our computer science curriculum is a computer engineering approach. You know, the engineers are the people who show up on the first day of school and they give you the list of every course you're going to take for the next four years, right, or four and a half years, right? And there's like one or two blanks, right, where you can fill in a couple of electives. But other than that, you're done, right? Computer science programs are not supposed to be like that, right? It's supposed to be you take a couple of courses and then the rest of the department sort of is open in front, right? I mean, at Harvard, there were like three required courses you took as an undergraduate. At that point, you could take basically probably a dozen, 15, 20 different hundred level courses, right? In artificial intelligence, networking, operating systems, all sorts of things, right? Here it's, you know, it's this year by year march through, you know, I think there's a lot of repetition, and it's way, in my opinion, it's just way too sequenced, right? Um, and that's terrible, right? You guys don't get to take really cool classes that, like, you should be able to take, you should be able to take a course in your sophomore year on artificial intelligence, right? And then, like, do cool stuff with that. Now it's not clear that any of you guys take those courses at all. Right? Or, or you have to be very, very careful about arranging everything in the three plus years beforehand so that finally when you're a senior you get to take something cool. Okay. I mean, that, that's too bad. Not to, not to denigrate the courses upstream because they're important, right? I just think in some cases it's too many. All right, so it looks like it is working now. So if anyone had to go, um, you're free to go. Um, no, please work out. I hope you guys enjoyed the event. There's still, I think there's, there might be some donuts and drinks if you want to, you're welcome to do some more. And can you please give a clap for our members?